Hi, everyone. I'm excited to be here and glad to join you all at JCConf uh, 2023. And uh, I'm delighted to be here to talk about Jakarta E and MicroProfile, open cloud native Java APIs for everyone with you all. To begin with, let me do a quick, uh, brief uh, self introduction. I'm YK, YK Chang. Nice to meet you all. Again, nice to be here at JCConf. I work for IBM and I am a software architect uh, and developer advocate at IBM. I work on uh, the Open Liberty project. Um, you can find out more information about Open Liberty at openliberty.io. And Open Liberty is a lightweight uh, open source Java runtime for developers to build cloud native Java applications and microservices. So today, we'd like to uh, talk to you all about Jakarta EE and MicroProfile. They are both efforts under the Eclipse Foundation, open and collaborative efforts under the Eclipse Foundation um, for innovating and providing cloud native Java APIs for developers to use to build your applications. Now, MicroProfile focuses on optimizing enterprise Java for microservices and cloud environments like Kubernetes, while Jakarta EE looks at building, enabling developers to build more than portable enterprise Java applications. And it's an evolution of uh, Java EE. First, let's take a look at Jakarta EE. Jakarta EE is really about innovating and evolving um, enterprise job technologies in an open, collaborative, and vendor neutral process, right? It's, uh, it's about the community coming together to build uh, and define what developers need in terms of uh, cloud native Java APIs, right? So it not only it provides the APIs that developers may use to build their applications, uh, also uh, under Jakarta EE, uh, you have the TCKs and, and uh, implementations that are certified to be compatible with Jakarta EE. Now, it all started back in September 2017 when Java EE was moved under over to Eclipse Foundation. And, um, and it has been evolving under the Jakarta EE brand or umbrella since then. If we look at what makes uh, Jakarta EE special or stand out compared to before, right? If you are familiar with how it was done for Java EE, it's, it's really specification first. Uh, you have uh, spec leads that would look after the different specifications or API work. Then the, um, the, the artifacts, like the documents, the TCKs that are needed are closed sourced. Uh, there is a reference implementation and the certification process is uh, managed, right? Compared to Jakarta EE, things are really um, different or it's on, and, and, and everything is really about being able to work together as a community, uh, being collaborative and being being able to innovate fast, right? So Jakarta E is about code first. It's collaborative in nature, right? Uh, and then the documents, TCKs are all open source, and it's not about one reference implementation, but one or more, essentially multiple compatible implementations where developers will have choices or freedom to choose which one to use. And um, if you and, and runtimes or frameworks themselves can self-certify to indicate requests uh, into, uh, for compatibility, right? So, so it's, a, it's a huge step forward um, from a community standpoint, um, especially for Java. And then it's really, Jakarta is really by the community, for the community. 
right? So, and, and, and the community has been looking at providing better support for cloud native architectures, right? Innovating faster uh, to keep pace with the latest innovation and, and provide the latest to developers to use, right? Looking at better in, in native integration with Kubernetes, as well as uh, providing tools for developers to use to work with uh, Jakarta EE. Now, um, since the move, right, back in 2017, um, the community has been busy, right? Um, so Jakarta EE8 was the first uh, release of uh, the, the platform or the APIs um, under Eclipse Foundation, right? It was still with the Java X namespace, but it was um, the first release as Jakarta EE. Then with Jakarta EE9, um, we moved from Java X to Jakarta that allows uh, the community to uh, really evolve the API, so innovate right under the Jakarta EE branding, uh, um, and then uh, to move faster, right? With Jakarta EE 9.1, um, um, Java SE support was added, and uh, there were multiple compatible implementations available on the release date. That's a uh, huge, right? So you have choices right from the get-go. Jakarta EE 10 uh, brings us, um, gives us Jakarta EE core profile, right? And, and, and various updates and improvements to the different APIs. And Jakarta EE 11 is uh, currently being worked on by the community. And the, the effort, right, Jakarta EE is backed by uh, multiple and a lot of the industry leaders, right? So there are companies like IBM, uh, Red Hat, uh, Tommy Tribe, Para that are involved um, from around the world, right? Uh, different parts of the world. And at the same time, there are also community involvement, right? Not only at an individual level as uh, individual committers, right? They are also uh, Java user groups that are involved in the uh, Jakarta EE effort or working group, right? For instance, uh, iJAC or London Java community, um, Su Java, uh, Istanbul Java user group, and uh, Garden State Java user group uh, in, in the States, right, in the US. Uh, so if the community here is interested, by all means, uh, not only as uh, individuals uh, that you can participate and contribute, um, obviously the uh, community can look at joining into Again, there are multiple compatible runtimes uh, that are compatible or certified to be compatible with Jakarta EE, right? The different releases of the APIs. You can go to jakarta.ee slash compatibility to check out the latest list. Uh, suffice to say, you have options, right? There's Open Liberty, there's Glassfish, there's um, what you get from Pyara, from, from Tommy, and, and Web Share Liberty, and, and, and so on, right? So. So they are all compatible and with the APIs that are certified, they are certified again. So developers, you as developers, you, we have choices uh, to consider and use and pick the best one, uh, what we liked best to work with to build our applications. And the list continues to grow, right? So if we look at some statistics from a, from a compatible runtime so or implementation standpoint in 2022, right? Uh, there were 33 platforms and 14 web profiles that were certified to be compatible. And, um, and then in 2023 this year, right? Earlier this year, I should say, uh, that has grown to 41 platforms and 18 web profiles. That's huge, right? That speaks to the vibrancy and, and the uh, the growth of the community with uh, actually everyone in the space um, coming on board to um, to continue to evolve and innovate for developers, right? Java developers to build the greatest and 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 uh, uh, the greatest applications or coolest applications uh, using Java for for users out there, right? And uh, looking at it from another angle, right? So so this is uh, in terms of uh, uh, who is involved in the um, in the uh, effort, right? So, twenty five member organizations um, mapping to one hundred and seventy about one hundred and seventy five committers, right? 
So in, in, in um, 55 open source projects associated with Jakarta AE, mapping to 154 uh, GitHub repositories with uh, 76 million lines of code. That's significant and, and they have grown, right? Uh, in the years that uh, Jakarta EE has come about, right? So, so yeah, everyone is invited to participate and, and contribute, right? Whether as an end user or, or, or to really participate directly to uh, make the APIs better, right? So, so we, uh, you're all welcome to join in. Now switching gear, gears slightly, let us take a look under the cover or, or, or take a look at what's there from a technical standpoint, right? So this is a view of the APIs provided by Jakarta EE, right? Um, there is the core profile, which is new in version 10 of Jakarta EE, and it's really about the, the set of, uh, the core set of APIs that you need for, for doing RESTful web services, right? So, so from there, um, built on top of the code profile, um, there is the web profile, which gives us uh, additional APIs for us to essentially build uh, a full-blown web applications, right? For online uh, transactions and whatnot, right? Uh, for instance, uh, under web profile, besides uh, what you need to do RESTful web services, um, there are APIs for us to uh, to work with uh, for, for front end, right? Uh, whether it's uh, with faces and others. Also, if you will need to persist uh, to, to a backend, to a database, there's the persistence API. And, um, and then from the web profile, you get the full platform, right? For Jakarta E that gives us uh, um, essentially the full set of APIs that a Java developer may need to build enterprise grade Java applications for, for cloud deployments, right? So let's dive a bit deeper and look at a few examples of the APIs or how they look like today, right? If you want to work with Jakarta EE. So let's take a look at uh, just a simple example of a RESTful web service, right? So, so with Jakarta RESTful web service API, it's pretty straightforward to uh, get things going. Right, uh, creating your say your first uh, REST for web services, and and you all may be familiar with it already. Um, it's annotation based, right? You have your POJOs, your your Java objects, then then you just annotate uh, things with uh, what is available through the APIs that APIs, right? And then defining, for instance, in this case here, the application path for your uh, web service, and then also the resources that you intend to provide. Uh, through that uh, endpoint, right? So, so in this case here, we have a properties resource and then with annotations, you would uh, annotate which uh, method will provide, say your get operations and so on, right? It's pretty straightforward and, and it you, you can get going quickly and uh, pretty easily. Now then, uh, if you want to hook up to a backend, then there is the Jakarta Persistence uh, API, right? So, so you have say say you have your data model as objects, right? Your 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 POJOs that map to uh, the uh, uh, the data that you need to work with, right? So then you would annotate uh, those objects as as your entities, right? With the annotations um, as your data entities, and then uh, you would define a bit of a configuration for your persistence context and in terms of the data source that you would need to work with, then. Um, and then from there on, right, uh, you would inject, you can inject an entity manager, right, uh, mapping to the persistence context that you have defined. And then there, there you go, you could define the kinds of uh, operations, data operations that you will need to do um, for, uh, for the data that you have, right? So, so yeah, and, and, and that's really straightforward to get going here, I would say. And uh, if you need uh, to dive things, uh, dive into things further, right? For example, in, in, in this uh, for for Jakarta persistence here, um, uh, OpenWebDB IO has a set of guides around it. Uh, you can take a look at that. Okay, so I talk about uh, Jakarta E. Let's take a look at MicroProfile now. Right again, it's another effort under the Eclipse Foundation. Um, there is the MicroProfile working group there. 
And um, similarly, it's really the community coming together for the community, right, to openly uh, work together to define collaboratively the set of uh, Java APIs that a developer or developers may need to uh, write or uh, build microservices these days, right? So it's a community of individuals, developers coming together with organizations and vendors collaborating openly right, to, um, to innovate upon the APIs that developers may need to build microservices today. There is many um, corporate members involved in the working group, right, uh, again, from the different Java user groups around the world. Uh, there's the Atlanta Java user group, uh, there's iJock, and then there is, uh, again, the uh, Garden State Java user group in New Jersey, US, right? Uh, similarly, there are different companies involved in MicroProfile 2, uh, like IBM, Red Hat, uh, Microsoft, and others, right? And um, and it's also about, MicroProfile is also about not just single reference implement implementation, but multiple compatible implementations. So so different frameworks or run and runtimes have uh, certified to be compatible for the different releases of uh, MicroProfile, which we'll take a look at in a bit. Um, Open Liberty is a compatible implementation. Kumalux is another example of that, right? So developers have choices. You, if you like to work with Tommy, you can. Otherwise, you can take a look at Pyra. If not, uh, Open Liberty, right? So, so freedom of choices here. And um, the community has been busy, right? In fact, if you look at the timeline, uh, MicroProfile predates or came before Jakarta AE. For what it's worth, uh, MicroProfile actually um, is what ushered in the move of uh, Java EE over to uh, Eclipse Foundation as Jakarta EE, right? So, so the community came about uh, about the time of uh, say say twenty sixteen or so, right? Um, to to look at how we can bring even greater innovation to Java developers, right? So J MicroProfile was born of that, right? Uh, back in twenty sixteen, the first release was uh, made available, and then the community has been really busy. From this chart slide alone, you can see since then, right? There has been a major release every year, pretty much, and multiple updates uh, in between, right? So we are up to MicroProfile 6 now, right? And um, the, the, the APIs, we'll take a look at it next, uh, aim to make it easier for developers to build microservices using Java for cloud deployments. So this is a view of the latest uh, set of APIs available on, through a MicroProfile. There is an umbrella set of APIs under the MicroProfile 6 release. Um, besides that, then there is a set of uh, standalone APIs uh, providing some of the leading edge uh, or cutting edge uh, technologies, right? So, so under the umbrella MicroProfile 6, um, MicroProfile 6 aligns with Jakarta E10 core, core profile. So core profile gives us the foundation or the base to do uh, RESTful web service. Then on top of that, MicroProfile provides additional APIs to make it easier for developers to uh, to write the uh, microservices. A set, there's a set of APIs that make it easier for microservices to interact with each other. For instance, uh, fault tolerance APIs to uh, to handle uh, failure situations, right? Uh, fallback and things like that. And then there is uh, JWT. Uh, Authentication APIs for dealing with uh, JWT tokens, uh, uh, JSON web tokens, right? Um, and then uh, there's the REST client API for work with, uh, for, for calling out to REST, other REST services, as well as uh, open API to make it easier for you to generate documents or documents your, the APIs uh, for your microservices, right? Then um, besides uh, APIs to make it easier for microservices to interact with each other, there's also a set of APIs to make it easier for microservices to uh, operate within a, a cloud uh, deployment, right, uh, like, like a Kubernetes environment. So these would be APIs like the uh, metrics, uh, the health check APIs, the config APIs, and including the latest uh, open telemetry APIs.
the standalone APIs from MicroProfile, right? They they would uh, uh, pro they, they are not part of the umbrella. They they are updated uh, um, continuously too, right? So so for instance, there are APIs for for reactive applications, right? Reactive messaging applications. Uh, there are APIs for doing GraphQL and 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 also long running uh, action APIs for dealing with uh, distributed transactions. So, so let's dive a bit deeper um, and look at uh, how some of the APIs uh, uh, work or, or what's available for some of the APIs, right? Um, this is an example of microprofile configuration. Microprofile config aims to, um, will help us to externalize configuration so that we don't need to, and we won't hard code in our code, right? So um, again, there you'll see uh, uh, annotations uh, and, and uh, in injection uh, as, a, as a common practice, right? So you would have, uh, you, you will be able to inject a configuration property into your code, right? And then work with, say, the host um, here, right? As an injected property, right? And, and the runtime and framework that supports microprofile config will then pick up the right values for your config property from the uh, the, the, the right configuration source with uh, the right priority, right, that you have uh, defined for your microservices. And the configuration sources can be from uh, any number of places, including uh, properties files or en environment variable, right? So, so it makes it easier for you to uh, work with um, objects in your code as configuration properties, right? And then, um, and then you don't have to change your code as you move your microservices around, right, in different environments. This is an example of MicroProfile Health. MicroProfile Health Check APIs uh, uh, are meant to make it easier for, for a service or an application to report on its uh, own status or health, right, whether it's ready, whether it's alive, or whether it has started up, right? So so that uh, uh, a cloud orchestrator can then probe the fine endpoints to see how the application or service is doing and then take, make decisions accordingly if something uh, has gone wrong, right? So when it comes to what developers need to do, again, you would uh, annotate a uh, class that you have as your, say, your readiness uh, check, right? And then you would provide, uh, uh, implement the defined interface to uh, provide um, a health check response to tell um, the uh, external party or the orchestrator whether you are healthy or not, right? And then um, the um, the um, and then the data or, or the health check response can be accessed through a defined endpoint. This is microprofile metrics. It's about uh, of the observability or providing uh, data about um, I guess your application under deployment and to see how things are, right? So the microprofile metrics provide a base set of uh, system level metrics, if you will, about uh, how, how things are for your running application. Besides that, what's more interesting is that microprofile metrics enable developers to uh, provide custom metrics for the applications, right? Um, so, so that you can know better and know more about how your applications uh, application is doing, right? In this example here, there is an order coffee uh, operation or, or, or uh, right? So, so then um, it's annotated with uh, it counted. Um, so then uh, there will be a counter counting how many times uh, order coffee or how many orders, uh, uh, there, how, how many how many orders of coffee have been received, right? So, so then um, that metric can then be scraped and be made available um, so you can monitor your application besides some um, system level metrics site like, uh, memory and things like that, right? So, so going down into the application and providing custom metrics for your applications, uh, what, what's meaningful for your, for your business logic, right? So, so that's microprofile metrics. Then um, let's take a look at how they actually fit uh, together with, uh, say, Kubernetes, right? So, so in the case of microprofile config, right, uh, we have injected a configuration property. Now, we, earlier we showed that uh, the the property value may come from uh, configuration file or properties file, sorry. But at the same time, 
in this case here, right? So it can be uh, easily pick up, be pick up from a Kubernetes configuration map, right? So you define an environment variable for that, and then that the value of that can be fed into, well, obviously not by you, but by the framework or runtime that supports microprofile config, into what you know, your code will use as, as the value for that configuration property, right? Similarly, for for health check responses. Um, um, right away, right, uh, for Kubernetes in your configuration there, uh, you can easily uh, set it to probe um, the um, defined endpoint endpoints um, for microprofile of health, right? So in this case, for instance, uh, you have, uh, uh, you set the readiness probe to probe uh, health slash health slash ready to see whether your your application or service is ready or not, then uh, Kubernetes will do so accordingly um, at the defined tools to uh, to see how things are and then make decisions accordingly, right? So, so that's uh, microprofile health. So these APIs, um, um, the community has uh, looked at them, and 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 defined them or uh, and and made them fit nicely with cloud environments like Kubernetes, right? Um, here is uh, microprofile metrics with Kubernetes. Uh, microprofile metrics data, yeah, yeah, they come in. Um, um, open metrics format that 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 can be uh, used easily, right? So in this case, uh, again, there is a counter here, and so the data can be straight from the fine endpoints uh, for microprofile metrics uh, to be collected into, say, your Prometheus, uh, and then uh, be visualized in Grafana as your monitoring uh, tools, right? So so yeah, things will just come together. So all in all, right? Jakarta EE and Microprofile, they, they complement each other nicely and they are truly open uh, cloud native Java APIs for developers to build your uh, Java applications for cloud, right? So not only they are open source in the sense that things are available, say on GitHub, right? But but really the, the efforts and, and the work in defining these APIs and innovating, um, they, they are, it's a truly open and collaborative uh, um, approach, right? So, so, and they enable developers um, to do a whole spectrum of uh, applications uh, using Java, right? Uh, whether it's microservices or or, or 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 modular monolith or other other approaches to uh, doing uh, cloud applications these days, right? So, so, and you can do so with uh, freedom of choices. Um, you can choose the runtime or framework uh, that you love the best to use, and there's no lock-in because things. Uh, Compatible or certified and certified to be compatible, you can have freedom to move around to right uh, if you have a need. So you you don't have to worry about lock-in. And even well, I mean with cloud, we know while clouds uh, there are different clouds, uh, there are still considerations for lock-in too or risks for lock-in too. So with uh, using and, and looking at uh, Jakarta E and Microprofile, these are uh, open API supported by multiple frameworks, so you are free from lock-in. And so they are open and freely available for everyone to use, right? Uh, whether it's a company or individual, and you can participate uh, in different levels, right? Or in, in different degrees. Uh, try them and use them, and uh, I invite you to participate and contribute directly to innovating on the APIs too, right? So, so, so now let me share some resources with you all, and then so you can uh, take a look at uh, what's available to help you get going. And uh, let me switch over to to um, my browser, and then we will continue from there. Okay, so hopefully you are seeing my browser here and I will um, make it bigger and um, so I'm at the uh, Jakarta EE website uh, just go to https uh, uh, jakarta.ee and you will find um, a bunch of stuff here so if you are interested in about uh, the details and, and, and uh, about the working group and things like that you can go under about um, but if you want to look at the specifications or APIs themselves, you can go under specification and take a look at things in more details, right? From the different profiles and the full platform to the individual uh, specifications and so on. And then besides that, you can actually uh, look at how 
the applications, I mean, the specifications are being developed and the, pro, the, the specification process. And this will help you understand how and where you can participate, right? So if, if you're interested, right, uh, if you're a spec developer, you're interested in participating or contribute your experience or, or even pro provide feedback in terms of, uh, well, after you use a certain API, it's not working as good, then you could uh, start with contributing by uh, opening issues in the different uh, specs repos and go from there and perhaps eventually becoming a committer. Right. So if you are long to look at the latest set of compatible products and so on, you can go under the compatible products page. And uh, there is also resources available, um, um, additional resources uh, available about uh, com how community participation, for instance, a Java user group can adopt a specification, right? So these are some of uh, um, the things that uh, uh, jobs have done, different jobs have done, so you can take a look at that and invite uh, JC, um, uh, I guess our community in, in Taiwan to look at this. And then uh, there's also events and other opportunities for you to get more involved or to learn more, right? And Jakarta EE also provides a starter. If we look at that, it allows us to generate a starter project easily, right? For to get going with uh, writing, operating a new Java application using Jakarta E APIs. So with the starter, um, you can select the version of the Jakarta E APIs you want to work with, which profile, and the Java SE version, and the runtime that you want to work with, and then uh, click generate. It will give you a zip file that you can then unzip and pull into your IDE to uh, work with to build your uh, Jakarta E application, right? So so that's a starter, and this is uh, what is available through our Jakarta.ee. Now let's take a look at MicroProfile. Similarly, uh, we can go to MicroProfile.io, and then we'll get to this page. Uh, again, various resources and information are available here right, uh, from, uh, say, um, the different projects associated with MicroProfile, right, and going to their respective uh, GitHub repo, repos to take a look at what's there and including the uh, specifications themselves, right, and, and, and uh, from there we can uh, open open issues, uh, provide feedback and things like that and, and try to participate, right, and then if you want to uh, join the working group, right, and uh, participate further, there is information here, including certainly um, the latest uh, list of uh, compatible implementations and how, um, how a runtime or framework can be certified to be uh, compatible, right? So, so if we look at MicroProfile 6, we go in, then it will show us the, which implementations are compatible with the latest uh, release of MicroProfile 6. Again, there are resources available for, um, for the communities uh, to participate, right, uh, and contribute different things, different assets. And there's also a MicroProfile starter, right? Uh, same idea as the Jakarta E starter, but for micro profile, if you want to quickly create a starter project and then get going with writing a code with uh, using micro profile APIs, then you can use the starter here. You can choose the different versions that you want to work with and then the runtime that you want to use and then uh, click download and then it will give you uh, a zip that you can unzip and then pull into your IDE to get going with um, micro profile uh, projects, right? So, so yeah, everything here is available for anyone interested in working with micro profile further. Right, now the last resource that I want to show is actually available through uh, Open Liberty. Um, so, so if you get to openliberty.io, right, uh, then if you want to learn more about Jakarta EE or MicroProfile or both, right, uh, OpenLiberty offers a set of uh, guides that are 
in my humble opinion, good learning resources that anyone uh, that can take a look at and uh, use, right? They are hands-on exercises for you to learn about the technologies, and in this case, uh, the different APIs uh, under my profile or Jakarta E or both uh, in 20 minutes or so, right? So for instance, if you want to learn how to create a simple uh, a RESTful web service, you can choose to work with uh, this guide here. Or if you want to uh, use MicroProfile Open API to document your, your RESTful APIs, then you can work with this guide here. Or if you want to look at other aspects of uh, the APIs like metrics or health checks, you can look at these guides. And um, so these guides are available and they are good learning resources for uh, developers to take a look at what do they do. If you, Let's click on this one, right, for documenting RESTful APIs. It, it's actually a hands-on tutorial, right? So to take you through how you would work with the MicroProfile Open API here, uh, MicroProfile Open API APIs here to uh, document uh, your RESTful APIs, right? Uh, and the different, it will take you through in a hands-on manner and explain to you what you need to work out, uh, uh, work out and, and uh, pay attention to. And, and the, everything here is open source, um, uh, to, including the guides themselves, so you can look at the code. And, and, and figure out what you need. Now, one way to work with it is to work locally, right? Uh, assuming you have a Git, uh, you have Maven on, as the build tool and a Java install locally with an IDE or whatnot, then you can clone from uh, the provided repos and get going uh, locally. Or if you don't have a local environment handy or if you don't want to quote, contaminate your local machine or your personal machine or laptop, then you can use a, a cloud hosted option, right? So you click on run in cloud, and then you'll be directed to a place where you can access um, the same guide, but using a cloud hosted environment where you will be provided with a cloud hosted IDE and, and so on to use where you can do the same exercise or the same guide or tutorial using a cloud, fully cloud hosted environment without any um, local setup. So, so, so these are a good set of resources that uh, Open Liberty team provides. So you can take a look at them, on, uh, I guess, at openliberty.io slash guides and, um, and learn more about Jakarta AE and um, MicroProfile. Um, so you can even filter by text to get to the guide set map to these APIs too. All right. So then the other thing is, um, um, similarly, Open Liberty has a starter too. In this case, this starter here uh, supports, uh, um, allow you to have both uh, Jakarta EE and MicroProfile specify if they, they are APIs that you want to work with uh, in the same application and using the same application, right? So again, you fill in the blanks, uh, pick what you want and generate a project, you get a starter project that you can easily unzip and then bring into your IDE to work with uh, uh, to use it to use it as um, I guess to to build your application. So yeah, so that's what I want to share with you all quickly um, in terms of resources available. And now let me switch back to the presentation and um, and let's wrap up. So we, I look, I showed Jakarta.ee right earlier, so don't hesitate, please do check it out. Similarly, there is MicroProfile.io, and um, you can uh, dive further into things uh, around uh, MicroProfile further there too. And uh, there's OpenLiberty.io, especially the guides uh, available to for developers, for us all to uh, learn more about MicroProfile and Jakarta.ee uh, APIs. Right, so so I invite everyone to uh, get involved, right, with Jakarta EE. Um, if your organization uh, is interested, you can become a member um, of the uh, working group, right, or, or even join Clips Foundation as a member, right, at an individual level. We, we can always participate as a contributor. We can join the mailing list, uh, the different groups available, um, open up issues to provide our feedback and, and perhaps eventually become an individual committed member too, right, to the specification process and so on. 
Similarly, for MicroProfile, um, everyone is invited to participate. Uh, there are different discussions that you can join. Uh, the meetings are available and uh, for, for the community to join in. Um, the code is open source out there. And also, um, and there are different activities beyond just uh, technical ones. Uh, for instance, if you're interested in helping to share the words about uh, spread the news, uh, the good words, or, or share share about more about MicroProfile and Jakarta EE, uh, you can do so too, right? So it's really um, a very friendly and open and collaborative community, right? So uh, I invite and encourage everyone to uh, to check it out, check them out, and uh, participate, contribute. Thank you all for your time. That's all I want to share with you all today and hope you have found uh, this session useful. If you have any questions or feedback, don't hesitate to reach out and let me know. So you can connect with me um, through LinkedIn or Twitter slash X or, or just email me directly. Um, thank you all for having me at uh, JCConf uh, and I hope uh, we get to meet again. Thank you everyone.